All them bands, and the different bands and the clan chiefs, and I don't know how many bands there was, but and I don't know how many clans there was, so I don't know how many chiefs there was, but they all lived on that mound there, and uh, that's why the uh, hunkers, uh, the big Osage they called them, lived on that band because they was uh, warrior people. And then uh, the weasel, the little Osage, they lived over at Halley Bluff on the Missouri, uh, Osage River. And uh, that's where them holes are in the ground where they dug out to store their, their stuff they wanted to keep cold, you know. But this mound up here was where most of the people were. They were camped all over, all over in here all over that mound, on our side of it, all around. On, there was about 2,500 people, they say, back in, in this area here. That's what I've been told. and I believe that, because uh, there was a large area for them to camp. That, but the chiefs were camped up on top of the mound, and they got numbers up there. And, and I don't think they tell you, because they don't know. Uh, where the chiefs actually, which camp they, which, which chief, what their name was, you know, for each of the bands and clans, and, and the high chiefs, first chief, second chief. And the Hunkers, see, they had their own uh, tribal, uh, um, uh, what would be the right word, uh, Etika, and the uh, Weasels had, uh, had their own, uh, you know. Etica, the proper uh, arrangements, just like the Hunkins did. And, uh, then uh, once a year, they would all come together, and they usually would come together over there at uh, the Harmony Mission, and that's where the kids went to school. And this camp here is nine miles down the river from. Harmony Mission. Harmony Mission was a, where the school and the blacksmith shop and the church and, and the, all the buildings, uh, you know, uh, the boys uh, building, girls building, and, and uh, once uh, every week the preacher would uh, have a church on Sunday and, and uh, they was not letting the full bloods come home to their parents on the weekends, and so they was letting the mixed bloods come home on the weekends, but they wouldn't let the full bloods, because the full bloods had to have an overseer. They wasn't allowed to get out of the area from the camp, from the barracks or their building, you know, where they stayed. And they got caught out of that boundary where they got in trouble. And so the parents wasn't very happy about it. And one Sunday they went to church. <coughs> all the, excuse me. <coughs> and all the people uh, from the Rizzo and the Hunka here went to church. And uh, all the chiefs and all sat down together. And, and then they had to... Uh, uh, High chief, which would be the first chief over both of the bands, the Hunka and the Weasel. <coughs> and uh, then all of the bands and the clans, too. And so the, they all went to church to complain about the preacher not letting the little kids, the full blood kids, come home on the weekend. And they was upset about it. And uh, there was a, a Frenchman, his name was uh, Bill Williams. He married an Osage woman and he could speak Osage and, and French and, and English. And he was a Ouija, a translator. And uh, when they would uh, have church, you know, then if, the, if there were uh, some of the uh, we, uh, Weasel or Hunker, well, we just say 
Washashi. Uh, that'd be the children of the Middle Waters, and that'd take care of both and all the bands and everything. Uh, Washashi is our people, that's what we say. We don't say old sage. And, uh, so everything was going pretty good, but old Bill, he told the preacher, he said, don't, don't do that because it's, they're already mad and uh, they won't understand that and you're going to cause more trouble. And he said, no, you, you don't tell me what to do. You work for me. I'll tell you what to do. And old Bill said, okay. <laughs> so there's a wagon and the preacher got up on the wagon, they say, and he was a preaching and him and Bill was up there and Bill was a translating it, old Bill Williams, <laughs> and uh, so he got to the part about the, where uh, the whale uh, swallowed uh, Jonas, and the chief stood up, and uh, then pretty soon the other chief stood up, and then, and then they all stood up, and then all the people stood up, and they said, uh, they all raised their arms and said, oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 and they was upset and they were yelling, you know. And <laughs> so uh, old Bill said to the preacher, he said, I told you, because they don't understand how a whale or a fish could swallow a man. The biggest fish you ever seen was down here in the Old Sage River. And, uh, there were no faces that big. And so the uh, uh, chief said, uh, you can tell that preacher that uh, well, we'd known for a long time that the white man speak with a forky tongue. But this is the biggest damn lie we ever heard. <laughs> so. They all took all their children out of the school and took them home with them. And of course, uh, Governor Clark, or uh, Clark, listen, Clark, Clark was uh, the governor of Missouri. And, and he, he called the president and he said, these old sages are causing trouble again. And they took their kids all out of school. What are we going to do with these old sages? They're always causing trouble, fighting with the pilgrims and stuff. And the trouble that he was talking about was when they get back home off their buffalo hunt, if they went quite a ways, well, the pilgrims, the white pilgrims, would all be moved into their camps. And they had to fight with them to get them out. And that's what, uh, according to Clark, you know, the old sages are, well, shashi was the ones that was causing the trouble. And uh, all they was doing was trying to get them, the people uh, that didn't belong in there out of their camps and stuff, lodges and stuff. But anyway, they, they were the ones that got in trouble, the Washashi people, my people. They were the ones that always got in trouble and for stuff that wasn't their fault. And I think that's true with all the tribes, really. All the tribal nations had mostly the same problems. And so they moved them again. And that was in uh, 1825. But 1824 was the last big dance that they had. And that dance took place back in here on, on the mounds. And uh, the uh, Missouri uh, peoples came down from the north. And at that time, they was camped over on the Missouri River over there by Old Fort Osage. And, uh, and there was a lot of Osages camped over there too. And they all come over here, the whole tribal Nyukonska nation uh, came over here. And uh, they was a, uh, a very, very honorable, uh, we call, uh, we'll say a tribal, um, and I, I wouldn't say powwow myself, I would say it was a um, a gathering for uh, purposes uh, to uh, worship the Creator. And uh, 
And I'd say it was a sacred gathering, you know. And that's what I would call it. And that's the last time that the Osages and the Missouri peoples had been together. And then they transferred them. They came in, and I think it was in February is what I heard, and the snow. And they tore their lodges down, and, and they transferred them and moved them to a little town. After they got done killing all of them, they wanted to, and dragging them behind their horses and killing them and shooting them and hanging them with ropes and everything. They, they took the rest of them over to uh, what a little town in Kansas called uh, St. Paul, Kansas. Another mission, a Catholic mission. <laughs> They're still trying to make white people out of them. And the kids, you know, and they go to them schools. Like, uh, for example, uh, uh, chief of the Osage, uh, um, let's see what his name was, uh, uh, I can't think of it right now. I think of it later. And then uh, he, well, he was sent to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and that's a long ways from home. A lot of them were sent there. And, uh, the first thing they done to them was cut all their hair off. And when you do that in our Washashi well, and the Missouri ways, it means that your families got killed or they died or something, you know. And so the kids thought their, their parents were dead and they didn't uh, had, had a lot, a lot of uh, hard time, you know, uh, heartache and uh, sorrow. And, uh, so they had a hard time. They uh, whipped them with uh, sticks and rulers when they would uh, make a mistake or try to talk or something hit the heads and their hands and arms and stuff and make bruises on them. And anyway, with Fred Lookout, he was uh, the chief, and uh, he said, uh, let's see, he was chief of the Osage or the Washashi, uh, 20, about 22 years. And uh, he, somebody asked him, said, uh, uh, Fred, what did you think, you know, when you uh, got back home? And he said, well, all the time that I was there, I wasn't allowed to talk my language. And uh, wasn't allowed to do a lot of things that we do. A lot of the ceremonies was uh, sacred, and we wasn't allowed to do any of the ceremonies. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, so... I missed that a lot, he said, and when he got back home, he said, it took him all that time to try to make a white man out of me, a white person out of me, and when I got back home, it only took me about 15 or 20 minutes to go back to my original self. And that's about all I got to say right now. <laughs>